We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulty. What is going on, YouTube? Yes, technical difficulties. That's a great way to describe this show so far. Uh, trying to get things set up. Oh, man, oh, man, what a day. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. My regular job was crazy, and now I'm having all sorts of weird issues trying to get this show started, so I apologize. It's just been absolutely a nuts, so just nuts day. Uh, so, everybody that's here, thank you for coming up. Uh, by the way, Darth Vader, you inspired the name of this live stream. Congratulations. Uh, Thomas throws his buck 99 into the chat. Thank you so much. Says, Lore said a bad word on his stream. He needs Jesus. Well, in fairness, I've said a couple of, of, of naughty words on my stream. Uh, so, if he let one slip out, that's all right. Uh, and I've heard Lore uh, actually drop the F-bomb on his stream once or twice. So, hey. Whatever. Um, I guess the party really has started. Well, thanks to Reality Strikes, the party is going to get good here. I'm going to have a sip of some uh, bourbon here. I've never had Kentucky bourbon, believe it or not. And he gave me a bottle of Woodford Reserve. Don't know anything about it. I've not seen the new Spider-Man trailer, Mr. Captain. Is it any good? <laughs> Hmm, that doesn't smell half bad. Alright, so first shot I'm going to have neat, but I'll probably mix it down with a little coke or something to if I have any more shots tonight. Because I don't want to kill my throat here. But thank you Reality Strikes if you ever see this, I appreciate it. Hmm, that's actually not bad. It's not, um, it's not too, it doesn't burn, even though it's a very strong. So that's actually pretty good. <clears throat> and no, this is not the uh, Trump mega par party. He used the F word. Well, that's surprising for lore, but I don't know what he was talking about. Maybe he's just in a bad mood. And Thomas, don't forget to pick a, um, a super chat reward if you want. Because, you know, that's, that's what it's for. But yeah, that's actually, that is pretty good. I like that. Washing it down with a little Coke actually is, is really good too. Um, so, uh, not bad, he says, about Kentucky bourbon, bourbon. The stuff is amazing. Well, hey, first of all, I'm a scotch snob. I mean, I have several bottles of scotch between uh, the ages of 18 and 28. So, yeah. so Thomas wants number 14 because why not bleach everybody's eyes real quick? Hey, you want to learn about Jesus? There's no such thing as hooker client confidentiality. And Captain Foley is in the house. Good to see you, Captain. Uh, I am very much looking forward. We're going to be recording a show on Thursday, so I don't know when they're going to get it posted on their channel and everything, but that's cool. I'm really looking forward to uh, meeting the commander and us having a good time. Um, can you do a live reaction to the new Spider-Verse trailer, or would that be copyright? It would be very copyright problematic, Mr. Miles. There are some channels that can get away with it, uh, but I am not one of them, unfortunately. Um... So, Captain Canuck, I like that. Luke, Luke, what are you doing up? It's like, what is it like four in the morning for you? What the heck are you doing, my friend? I mean, I'm glad to see you, but I'm, I'm shocked. Um, Darren thinks that Catherine Foley should be in the brig. Now, that's not very nice, but why is that? Uh, drawing for the fun of it is also here. It says, uh, anti Trucker, hello to everyone else. Please, if you could get me your avatar or profile picture for me to use in the teaser I asked in Discord, but... Okay, so, yeah, drawing for the fun of it is putting together a fun animation thing. So, yeah, if you can, on my Discord server, send him, uh, since I guess he's gonna do something with everybody's avatars and stuff, send it to him. Um, because I think it'll be cool. I don't know exactly what he's doing, but I know it'll be fun. Um, 
I still want to know the context of the cross-dressing lore bit. Okay, so here's the context of it. This was actually when I was doing a Christian-themed channel. And uh, so uh, this was actually the first time that me and uh, at the time he had a channel called Lasoyo, but uh, Lore Reloaded, this first time we met. And so we did this little thing where we were like pretending to do a talk show together and we were reading a question saying, hey, you know, because I consider uh, we both consider ourselves reasonable, moderate Christians. And so it's like, hey, you know, we know that the, the far uh, the, 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 the extremist cons uh, conservative Christians tend to like go out there and proselytize. What do you do as a moderate Christian? And so then he says, I got an idea. And then he goes out dressed like that and does the, you want to talk about Jesus thing. And then he comes in and he pulls out some money and say, he tithes. So that was, that was the context of the whole thing. Um, Mr. Miles wants to know if track yards, if people are allowed to curse on his discord. <laughs> See, they, they, they're mad at me because we, we block some curse words. Um, and by the way, Captain Foley, you may want to consider enlisting the help of Captain George for your Discord if you're if if you need any help. George did all the work on mine, so he gets pretty much all the credit. James Pace Photography puts a picture of me in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, I am a Russian robot, apparently. Yes, I'm going to probably do a video about that tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'm a Russian robot. So. That, that's all I'll say. Um, and so, Rainbow says, Drawing for the fun of what's your Discord? I'll say, I think, isn't it? He's just called Drawing. He's, if you go to my Discord, Rainbow, and then uh, look for Drawing, you'll find him. Um, and so, let's see. Uh, greetings, Commander, Comrade, Trekker, all Russian bots salute you. Ugh. Yeah. Great. Uh, anti trucker please put up your chat screen. What do you mean put up my chat screen? What do you... T oh! Ta! <laughs> I'm sorry, Kronos. I'm an idiot. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I was like, just... Uh, got my Eagle Moss USS Stargazer today, and they got the saucer thickness all wrong. I haven't seen it yet. Now, Captain Foley is the expert on that so captain foley i don't know if you've seen the eagle moss uh, stargazer and if you have is it indeed all wrong uh eric cartman says anti checker how does it feel to be out they outed as a russian troll by the msm for your last jedi reviews <sighs> it's embarrassing it truly is um yeah I i'll comment on it probably tomorrow but yeah i'm, I'm truly sorry i didn't didn't mean to get caught um, it's anti-yards again. Um, yeah, so Captain George, now obviously I don't want you to shirk your duties as Captain George of my social media, but obviously if you can give Trek Yards a little bit of a help, a uh, little bit of a, little bit of a hand, uh, getting his stuff set up, uh, you know, that's what the community is all about, helping each other out. Um, and so let's see. Uh, Ray, well, yeah, there's a picture I just put in Discord under pictures and memes, and you can find it right there. Um, oh, you you put it. Uh, you talking about the for the thing you're doing? Yeah. Trackyards, you haven't seen the Stargazer yet. I have not either. I don't know if Lore Reloaded's gotten one because he gets all the Eagle Moss stuff for free. That jerk. Um, Shannon says, "Good evening, comrades." Good to see you. Yes, we can we can speak with our natural accent now. Um, we all knew anti Trekker was Russia. Just listen to that thick accent. Yes, uh, it is true. It's ironic that Gene Roddenberry, who went out of his way to include a Rusky in TOS, his modern day fans are vitriolic against Russians. It uh, didn't seem to be a problem when they were uh, when they were the USSR. Yeah, that is kind of funny, actually. Um, and I think it's hilarious that, yeah, the, this, yeah, the, whatever. Um, and and you know, yeah, you know, I, I I'm not going to get into it right now. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Jaegerbomb throws five bucks into the chat. Said never thought it would be unpatriotic to not like the Last Jedi. 
first racist, then sexist, now a traitor to America. What's next? Aliens? Yeah, no kidding. You are so right, Jaegerbaum. And you want to see... You are the most polite super chatter ever. You want to see uh, super chat number five. Um, and so you got it, my friend. Let me bring that up. So, uh... Does anybody really know why uh, we're fighting anyway? Well, um, I think... Hey, didn't he vote for Trump? Hmm? Get him! Get him! Get him! So remember, if anyone has an opinion, they're probably wrong. Now, now we, we know. know! And knowing is half the battle. And Captain Foley apparently gets all the Eagle Moss ships for free, too. Well, you're... Um, you're a jerk. Um, no, actually, I, I'm, I'm very jealous of you, to be honest with you. I would love to have... The, the Eagle Moss collection, There, some of those ships are really nice. Although, to be honest with you, there's only a few of them that I would care about. Um, and so, I miss getting to kill Russians sometimes. <laughs> okay, Darren. Um... Yakov Smirnov needs to do a Last Jedi review. It'll go viral. Oh, man, that would be awesome. Communist con. Yeah, we need to do it. <laughs> Comrade, I have done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. Um, and Jaegerbaum. Uh, shh, 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 don't put our native tongue in the chat, man. People will figure out that we're not joking. Um. And so, let's see, yeah, uh, just finished, oh yeah, they're talking about the thing. Uh, Enderman says, I just prevented a friend from possibly committing suicide. That is freaking awesome, Enderman. And also, it is good to see you, Enderman. And you know what we got to do? We got to put that probe in your brain. <laughs> Wow, that was weird. Um, who says unpatriotic? Well, we're all unpatriotic because we're Russian. Uh, my favorite part of the '80s animation is the Care Bear. Yeah, I love the Care Bear part too. That 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 part is freaking awesome. Well, I'm surprised nobody picked number one out of, but that's all right. We'll see. You guys are gonna like that one, I think. Uh, Trek Air. Oh, that's. Uh, I got a Borg probe Eagle Moss today. Man, what is with everybody gets the Eagle Moss ships except me? I gotta make my own. Um, yeah, and I will, let me, let me say this, Captain Foley. I mean, I know you don't know me that well, but I will personally vouch for Captain George. He's a complete idiot when it comes to Star Wars, but at the same time, uh, he has full admin permissions on my discord. You, you can absolutely trust him. Um, they need to ne rename the planet Romulus to Russia. Uh, no, that, that would be a little too obvious because, you know, mother of Russia. Um, Hugo says, who's in the house? Hugh is in the house. Good to see you, Hugo. And Checker, I think, uh, that probe was put into your head. No, no, it's definitely in your head, Enderman. Uh, when you said communist con, I thought you were going to make communist con and going to make a gluck. <laughs> uh, wow, you made your computer. Yeah, it did. It truly did. Um, what what's this about Trump? Uh, well, actually, the the today yesterday's live stream was about Trump. Although Trump is now officially has his own super chat at number thirteen. Um, Mike just lost it for a few seconds. I, I don't my 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 computer comrade. The people's computer is not doing well today. Um, uh, let's see. I think that Lucasfilm uh, would put just as much effort into the films as they do defending them. That would be nice if they did. Um, let's see. Darren got the Eagle Moss USS Orenko, the uh, Danube-class runabout, and that was superb. Very cool. Uh, I hate you all. Um, Luke throws one 
evil European dollar in there. Thank you so much, Luke. And uh, Captain George says, idiot, how dare you? Oh, sorry, Captain. I'm, I, sometimes I get too honest. I filmed a review of the Eagle Moss XL Reliant today. It'll be out on Friday. Uh, I've seen that one. It looks really nice. Uh, you have a different opinion. Yes, Captain George, but your opinion is wrong because you're not Russian like the rest of us. Uh, I get a free Eagle Moss ship. They send, uh, they send them to me just to annoy you. Yeah, that <laughs> would probably work. Amy is in the house. Good to see you. Um, uh, perhaps you heard of Russian epic Cinderella. If shoe fits, wear it. Yes, Chekhov's only memorable line from that movie. Uh, so Luke wants us to release a surprise. All right, guys. So this is the new one. Um, and yeah, I think you'll like it. I'm a better female character than you. You would be if you didn't spend all your time with that temper tantrum meme guy. At least I'm not the one on a show with a questionable acronym. Take it back. No, 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 yes, no, yes, no, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, yes, yes. Oops. Sorry to bother you. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Just a little randomness dealing with all the new stuff. And so the official name of that one is now Here Comes the Woman, because that's a thing. Um, Amy says, someone buy him a new computer. Yeah, I'll tell you, you, you may notice that uh, the, the anti-printer uh, fund has been removed, and that is because... Uh, thanks to uh, the, the generous donations of those of you that put into the fund. Plus, uh, this week was, of course, the, uh, the time that I get the funds from my monthly uh, patron support. The anti-printer has, in fact, been ordered. It should be here uh, on the Day of Reckoning, that is the 4th, because the 4th is the anniversary of my first DMCA, which was attached to my first video. Um, which if you saw my video yesterday, you'd know about. Uh, yes, we did show Ben Swolo. That was a very literal interpretation of Ben Swolo. Um, Iron Wolf, literally skipped my comment, Andy Trekker. Sorry, I'm sorry, Iron Wolf. Let me go back and see what you said. Captain George knows more about Star Wars than you will ever know, Andy Trekker, LOL. Um, yeah. Uh, he knows more about some some elements of Star Wars. I fully admit that. He's just wrong when... I mean, he posted on Twitter about how Kathleen Kennedy did not ruin Star Wars. So, you, yeah, there's that. Uh, what about the Infinity Bird? Um, well, sorry, the Infinity... Ben, you haven't been around for a while. Look, the, the list is what it is, my friend. There's been a few that have been retired, and the Infinity Bird is indeed one of them. Uh, in Russia, the name of Captain of Enterprise was Chekhov, and the annoying young ensign with the monkey's hair was named Kirk. Uh, is that really true? I don't. I hadn't heard that. Uh, were you able to get my voice recording for? Yes, I did. Sci-fi. I do have it. Um, uh, it can't come until Tuesday, so so it's actually coming on Thursday. So, yeah. Uh, what kind did you buy? It's a. Um, CR10S5, which is a step up from the Ender, uh, and it also has, it can print very very large items, which we're gonna have some fun with. Love the woman says T Stony. Congrats on the one year. Um, a little hell to get to heaven. <laughs> yes, and T. Uh, T. Stoney, of course, you know, you get to pick any of the Super Chats all the way up through the Mega Chats, so you pick whatever you want there, my friend. Uh, what's up? Didn't get notification. I put the strand together. Check out photo on Discord. You guys, why do you always want me to go to Discord when the chat is going 90 miles an hour, so now I'm going to miss a bunch of crap on the chat, and then you guys are going to say, why did you skip my comment? And it just, yeah, it becomes ugly. And Discord is not, oh man, just, everything is just messing up for me today. The anti-computer is not doing well today, I will tell you. Uh, it's like barely fun. Oh, you got the picture of the anti-trekker there on there. So yes, you can see the first official home picture of the USS anti-trekker is out. Um, all right, let me see if I can find. Here's a quote for referencing. I don't know. Uh, 
Oh, for your Twitter? Yes. So, yes, what Captain George said on Twitter is, Today in Outrage, people are upset that Kathleen Kennedy is in charge of Lucasfilm for another three years. Why are people so upset? It's not like she ruined Star Wars. The only thing hurting in Star Wars is the games, and even that can be fixed. Just calm down, people. That, those are the words of Captain George. Let the crucifixion begin. Uh, so, T. Stoney, don't forget to pick one if you haven't already. Uh, okay, let's see. Quantum! T. Stoney's going to make us all suffer. All right, guys, here it comes. I may have a sh**. It's not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean sh**. Take the bloody sh**. All right, thank you so much, T. I truly appreciate it. And yes, that reveal is rather painful, isn't it? Um, and so, Chrono says, just saw Ant-Man and the Wasp, thought it was not half bad. What did you think? Loved it. Uh, I'm actually going to, I haven't purchased it yet, but I'm, I'm going to and probably watch it this weekend. Uh, I, I, liked, I liked it a lot. Uh, I think that the Ant-Man films are a nice, especially as a follow-up to Infinity War, it was a perfect follow-up because it didn't take itself too seriously, but at the end of that movie, boy, does it remind you of what happened. And so, yeah, that, that ending, man, that's a gut punch as I hit myself in the chest. Kathleen Kennedy produced Mega Chat number one. Um, actually, that was Kathleen Kennedy in Mega Chat number one. Most people are confused and they don't they think it's Laura Reloaded, but no, that was in fact Kathleen Kennedy. Um, so let me try to get caught up here. I'm sorry for uh, Quantum Leaper is in the house. Good to see you, Quantum. And uh, you know what? After all that eye bleach, I think I'm going to have another little taste of reality's fine bourbon. Because, by the way, Reality, I, I think you missed it when you first uh, came on. But, yeah, I, I tried a little bit of this bourbon. It's not bad at all. Mm. All right, let's see. Yeah, the end surprise. Yeah, the ending. of Man, oh, man, that ending. And if you haven't seen that man and the Wasp yet... You you should see it. Um, hey, Michael, your impression on Captain Marvel. I thought you were going to say my impression of Captain Marvel, which would be this. I'm a superhero. 
Um, honestly, I think that the movie will probably be good, but the trailer is doesn't grab me. There's nothing about it that um, that makes me excited about it. So that's that's the problem with the trailer. Uh, I was more excited about Nick Fury and Agent Coulson than I was about Captain Marvel herself. And the the whole point of that trailer should be to show me why I should care about Captain Marvel. And when you watch Venom when it comes out, I'll pr uh, I believe it comes out this weekend, and I pr I'll probably see it like on Sunday. Uh, me, me and Mrs. Andy Trekker will go see it in, in the hopes that it's good. But I'm not optimistic. Jaegerbomb throws five bucks into the chats. Thank you so much. Says, oh, Doomcock says, hail Anti-Trekker. And hi, uh, he'll spare you and make you a ruler of a province. Which one would you like? Uh, and may I see Uber chat number one? Well, I actually, shoot, I don't have it handy, I don't think. Uh, no, I don't. But I actually have a certificate from uh, Lord Doomcock that shows that I am in, I am officially in charge of quantum under his rule. Um, but you want Uber Chat number one? You absolutely can. Well, you 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 you're so you're so polite. It's just strange because maybe I'm just not used to people being polite. You're wrong, Your Highness. I am lore reloaded, a lore master, like my father before me. So be it, lore master. If you will not be turned, you will be destroyed. You will pay the price for not going with the studio's vision. Father, please! Huh? No, no, I'm good. <laughs> and let's get back. So every time you say you truly appreciate it in a video, I sip Drambui, I get bleeped up pretty quickly. I do say that a lot, don't I? I'm sorry, but it's how I feel, man. That's the problem. I can't. Can't help it. What do you think of my voice recording of Khan? Asked Sif. I said, "You will find out, my friend. I'm not going to comment on any more of the recordings, other than to say, wait for the Khan Khan. And if your voice is in it, then it passed the test. Ha 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 ha. Um, uh, go back up to my other comments," says Quantum Leaper. All right, Quantum. Let's see. Uh, I came in to see Quantum of the Force. Who's uh, uh, to, uh, who's the creep that asked for it? Well, the creep that asked for it is um, uh, T. So, yeah, you, you gotta pick a fight with T. Uh, let me see here. Where now I'm a little lost here. Okay. Um, I'm fairly new to Discord. How do I upload a picture to it? You just drag and drop if you're on a computer. Uh, you can drag and drop right into the chat. Um, and reality's talking about the bottle. Yeah, the Woodford Reserve uh, is pretty good stuff. Absolutely. This is my first real Kentucky bourbon, and, and I'm not complaining. That's pretty good. Um, you show more emotion than she does. Yeah, I, I think I did show a little too much emotion. Uh, emotion of my imitation of Captain Marvel. Venom is getting brutal reviews. Does not surprise me, considering the trailers look like my avatar. Um... On October 4th stream will be, uh, will be CBS Sucks Cup Stay Full, your first CBS TV. Oh, yeah, that whole stream. I'm going to be, that's going to be CBS Sucks Day. But here's the good news is that's the day that the anti-printer should arrive. And so during the CBS uh, Sucks stream, uh, I may do an unboxing live. I think that might be fun. Um, so uh, Trekyard says I'm polite. Yes, you are. When you're on your channel, you're not polite over here as much, so that's kind of weird. What's with that? Uh, Hugo throws five bucks into the chat. Thank you so much, Hugo. It says, in Soviet Lucasfilm, contract signs Kathleen Kennedy for another three years. Number five Uber chat, please, comrade. Yes, we must have the number five. So, uh... Does anybody really know why we're fighting anyway? Well, um, I think. Hey, didn't he vote for Trump? Hmm? He did. Get him! 
get him! So remember, if anyone has an opinion, they're probably wrong. Now, now we, we know. know! And knowing is half the battle. <laughs> I do love that one. Uh, Anton and Waspinator, the Russian bot version. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see. Trackyard says all the damn time until I want to kill you. That's you, you, you could be really disturbing. Okay, I got to get caught up. I'm way too far behind. Too much politeness. I'll help balance the skill. You suck. Wrench me. Uh, hold on just a second. Let me get... Where's that wrench I had for you? There it is. All right. Uh, Trackyard says... Uh, let's see. I don't even know what that is. Who does Palpatine's voice? That would be Captain George. He's actually very good at it. Um, and somebody already answered that, I see. Not bad, says Trek Yards. Yeah, he, he's actually, he does a good Palpatine. Uh, let me, all right, uh, get, get, get down here. All right, so Josh Street says, so the PayPal's now the new anti-computer. Yes. Uh, so now that the anti-printer is on order, and I cannot wait to, uh, of course, it's going to take me a couple of weeks to get the settings of that one down. And the person that is the official legal owner of this one has told me to continue to use this one, um, and they'll let me know when they need it. So, which is cool because then I can get both of them running at the same time. So while I'm tweaking this one, I'm going to be producing uh, plaques. Which, by the way, you can see these are coming out. I, well, you can't really see because it's too bright, but these are coming out pretty good. Um, and they're and and I know Reality Strikes can vouch. They're they're actually pretty solid considering they're printed plastic. I'm very impressed. Um, all right, I have another question. Who is the man with the beard and the black in your regular videos when you're bringing up a counterpoint? Who's the man with the beard? Oh, uh, um, you mean Mr. Jerkface. That's what I introduced him as the first time he was on. Uh, the guy with kind of the scraggly beard and the hat and the, and the Bob Ross t-shirt. He is a friend of mine, uh, actually, that goes to the same church as I do. And the reason I used him the first time was because he actually liked The Last Jedi. So I just decided uh, I'm going to use that. Uh, Sci-Fi says, I hope I'm in the con con, uh, part. I've been a subscriber follower for three months. I think it was, I would have earned it. Well, you will find out Sci-Fi when we have the day of the con con that would, then you will find out. We all know the bourbon was invented in Russia. Yes. Bourbon is a fine Russian drink. And you see, here's the thing. I really am a Russian bot because I have a big old bottle of gray goose right there. Oh, of course, Grey Goose is from France. Sorry, Luke, that's for you. Um, but I do have over here, Smirnoff. Smirnoff is good Russian vodka. All right, so. Um, and do you enjoy any whiskey lately? Um, I haven't had any lately uh, because I genuinely, generally when I, when I, uh, like the, the raw meal and ale and stuff that I mix, it doesn't mix well with whiskey, so I mix it with vodka. But the, um, so no, I haven't, I haven't broken open a bottle of scotch. I'm going to break open, because I have about a half a dozen bottles of scotch that are good bottles of scotch. Like I said, they, they range in age from about 18 to 28. And I will break one of those open when I hit 10,000 subs. Uh, and then I'll probably break, uh, I'll, I'll break open the 28 year old scotch when I can actually retire from my regular job. If that ever happens, you should sue Sony pictures for copyright infringement with venom. Oh, because of the turd in the wind. Yes, I agree. Um, all right. So I'm sorry about if I missed your comment, it's not intentional. I just, I I'm way behind here guys. And, and so truly I'm sorry. Um, off subject, remember Black Hawk Down, today's 25th anniversary of the battle I, of Mogadishu. I did not know that. So thank you for bringing that up, Jaeger. Uh, because, yeah, absolutely, those guys, they went through hell. And let's see, uh, I was checking to see why my phone went off. It was, I got a new t Twitter on, Twitter follower. Um, 
So how do we sign up to do the ConCon Con thing or whatever? You go to Discord and uh, send me a direct message with your best con. However, it has to be because I'm, I'm, I'm only putting one con of each accent. But if you're going to do an accent that's not yours, please be authentic about it. I don't want racial stereotype accents. I want authentic accents in there. Um, except for the Irish. They, you can make fun of them. Uh, does your friend know you've turned him into an anti less Jedi? Yes, in fact, I showed him because uh, I used him in my in my um, Last Jedi review, and I asked his permission before I did, and then I started using him just as my generic upset nerd, and he loves it. He he's totally cool with it. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Captain George says I'd be willing to voice it too. Oh, Captain George will do anything. He'll he he loves putting his his voice out there because he thinks he's really great because he can do Palpatine. Uh, when you do solo, I'm willing to do the counterpoints. <laughs> Captain George, uh, a Russian versus a Scotsman in a drinking contest. You see. That's a tough one because on the one hand, I know you, everybody knows I'm Scotch Irish, and so I should say the Scots because the Scots are born. They don't get like milk. With they, their their mom's breasts are actually full of Scotch. I mean, they drink neat Scotch from the the from the mom's breast when they're an infant. So the Scots are the best drinkers on the planet. Uh, the only people that even come close to the Irish. But now that I've been outed as a Russian, I kind of got to say Russian. Uh, Eric says, hey, anti Trekker, on your video from earlier, I have a question. Do you know anything about the postmodernists? If not, get ready to enter the 13th level of hell. Uh, enough about them to know that I don't care for their philosophy. <laughs> That's a, uh, I'm not an expert on postmodernism, um, and, but yeah, I don't care for them. The Renegade 79 says mixing good whiskey gets you a place and special. Well, that's the thing. I don't like to like the, and, and in fact, you notice that I said I was going to probably mix this after the first shot, but I didn't because it's, it's good. So <laughs> I didn't know how good it was going to be. I know reality said it was his favorite. So, but reality, let's face it. He looks like, you know, a, a kind of a, a chunky Lex Luthor. So I was a little nervous about how good it was really going to be. Um, Klatsnya Vodka in honor of Michael. Mikhail. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I hope Venom movie is good. I do too, but I don't think it will be. Remember, if Andy Trekker read your comment, it's because he doesn't like you. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, Mr. Mike. So now I'm just going to skip your comments. Uh, Chrono says, Andy Trekker, oh, be honest, you'd like to ignore chat. Search your feelings. Oh, and in fact, I think you said, didn't, uh, I'm sorry, I've been trying to keep up. But I think you put something in PayPal, didn't you? If you did, I uh, thank you, Kronos. And you got to tell me. Give me a second because I can't see the chat right now. And the chat is going 90 miles an hour today. But maybe you didn't. I thought you did. But for some reason, I guess you didn't. I just lost my mind. Um, all right. So now I'm back here. Uh, where are we? Nice teats. All right, Kronos. <laughs> I like postmodern architecture, but that's about it. I can handle postmodern architecture. Yes. Uh, nice. Hey, Brazil. <laughs> okay. Didn't check off and Scotty get into it. No, I don't think they ever did, but they should have. That would have been a great little side moment in Trek. Uh, reality is a chunky Lex Luthor. Yes. And now reality is a chunky WTF. Now look, reality. I'm fat. I didn't say you were fat. All right. But you're chunky compared to what we typically see. I mean, look at Jason Eisenberg, okay? That's skinny Lex Luthor. You are not skinny, all right? You're not fat, but you're not skinny. So, yeah, you're chunky Lex Luthor. Get over it. No, I didn't. Sorry, boss. I'm tapped out. Oh, that's okay, Kronos. I thought you I thought you said something about PayPal, So I, I, but the chat's been going so fast. No biggie. Um, Soviet versus Nazis, who would win? Well, it's been done. Soviets won. Uh, postmodernism is evil. In fact, one could say that he did a postmodern Star Wars movie. Absolutely, I think I think that Ryan Johnson is clearly a postmodernist, and his and the postmodern uh, philosophy is reflected in the Last Jedi throughout. Um, 
Amy says, anti checker, I think there's a setting where you can slow down the chat. You can, but the thing is, is what it does is it makes it so that when you enter something, you have to wait. And I don't want to do that to you guys because some of you are talking to each other. The one thing that I ask, especially as the chat gets a little busier, uh, as the channel's getting a little bit more popular, and by the way, thank you because uh, we have about 60 people watching right now, which is great. Thank you all. But make sure that if you're talking to another person in the chat, put the at and their name before. And if you're talking to me, put the at and anti trekker so that I can tell the difference. It makes it so much easier. It truly does. Um, because as, a, as if things get any busier than this, I'm going to have to just look for chats that have my name in it. And, and I don't want to miss something if it's good. Um, Checkyard says, I see you have more viewers than usual tonight. It's because my shout out to you the other day. It could be. And if you did, thank you. Uh, I did. And so, but uh, Foley, I, I asked. And by the way, I apologize for trolling. And I know a lot of these guys were involved in it, but I apologize for trolling your, your live stream the other day. But it was just, your timing was so perfect. I just had to do it. And I, I thought it was fun. I hope that Commander Cockings took it with a grain of salt as well, because, uh, but it was just, I just told everybody to go there and and say, how dare you do a stream at the same time as me? Are you going to ask me to do the truffle shuffle? No, I'm not. Uh, uh, Mr. Miles says, Andy Trigger, you should, uh, you should, you just said should have when you sh uh, should have said should have in proper grammar, admit your mistake. All right. I made a mistake. I am not a grammar professor. So there. Eric Cartman of Borg says, Andy Trekker, I think the fi uh, fiction problems are more of a postmodernist problem, especially when you take things um, into considering anti canon stuff. I tend to agree. Postmodernism is polluting uh, Star Trek, Star Wars, um, but Star Wars especially. I mean, The Last Jedi is clearly a postmodern crap fest. It's understandable when I'm on, the only thing you think is PC is PayPal. <laughs> That's not true, Kronos. I love you, man, and you know it. But um, I just, I thought, I genuinely thought I saw you say something about PayPal, so I, I wanted to make sure I checked. Um, so, but I, and I don't mean to sound like, I, I'm not trying to be greedy, but yeah. Uh, but anyway, you guys, so yes, uh, the PayPal link below, just so you know, from this mo moment forward, 100% uh, of anything that goes to that PayPal link goes towards the anti-pewter, which will be the replacement for the current computer, which has served me well, but it's served me for a long, long time. Um, so, I'm glad you did. Good. I'm glad, I'm gl I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, Antichecker, I've noticed that certain Packlid uh, hasn't been in your live stream chats lately. Yeah, he's been busy. I mean, and... Laura's got Laura's got a full full plate, so I don't fault him for that because I mean he is my friend, and I'll tell you I haven't actually talked to him except until today. I talked to him today, but I hadn't talked to him before that in quite a while because he's been very busy. Uh, he's a single dad now, taking care of two kids and doing YouTube with a channel that's pushing forty thousand subs, um, and adjusting to you know dealing with the divorce and everything. So he's got a lot going on. So I absolutely don't, you know, don't fault him for not showing up on my live streams. Uh, Hugo, thank you so much. So five pounds into the chat says Russian Johnson's favorite movie trope, Soviet version, Russian Johnson's favorite movie trope, Soviet version. Are you talking about like Soviet version of last Jedi in Soviet last Jedi? Um, the force is only for the party. That's, that's, you see, that's the problem. It's not for everybody. It is only for good, good communists. Um, uh, and, and by the way, of course, Hugo, you can pick a uh, super chat or uber chat reward. Let me know what you want, my friend, and I will throw it up there. What am I printing? Actually, the printing is done, and it's funny you should ask. I actually printed something practical. It, is, it, it, it looks kind of silly at a glance. Uh, I know it's hard to see in the lighting, but it's really, um, when I take it off the print bed here, it's a platform that I actually designed. Uh, it only took a couple minutes. It's not like I spent a lot of time designing it. But you'll notice that it's it's basically a rectangle with a notch cut out, and there's also a, a, a tiny peg here. So here's 
We'll find out live if it works. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch to the other webcam. All right, so this is obviously the printer cam here. And I'm going to pick up the printer cam so you can kind of see what's going on here. So here's the... I don't know. It's, it's really dark, isn't it? All right, so get a bird's eye view. Well, we'll put this in here. Holy crap, it's a perfect fit. And let's see. We'll put this turret here as a counterweight. And... So the peg is nice and snug. It actually looks like it's going to work. <sighs> all right, so basically all that boiled down to, as I bored you to tears, was it was a, um, it's a mount that I created to mount the webcam to the shelves here to point at that printer. That's all, all it was. Um, all right, so uh, Hugo says yes to what you said, and Uber Chat three, please, you comrade. Of course, comrade. We are all comrades here. We are nerd comrades. <laughs> and so t stony throws a buck into the chat thank you t don't forget to pick a super chat reward i truly port appreciate the support um and i'm sorry if i missed your comment again i know i'm way behind once again i'm trying i'm tr so trying um gotta see the woman before i go you got it my friend so i hope you're still here because the woman is freaking awesome here it comes I'm a better female character than you! You would be if you didn't spend all your time with that temper tantrum meme guy. At least I'm not the one on a show with a questionable acronym. Take it back. No, 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 yes, no, no, Yes, 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 yes. Oops. Sorry to bother you. <laughs> and there it is. There's the wow man. So, thank <laughs> you. So I, I love it. That was that that was basically Joshua's creation there, um, and he because he it started with he was like, Dad, why why do you hate women so much? Because he you know he just hears me complaining about stuff, and I just, I don't, but some of the stuff is annoying. So he created that. Um, so thank you, T. I appreciate the buck, and I hope you enjoyed it. And now you're leaving. So. <laughs> So Amy says PayPal. So Amy, did you actually throw something into PayPal here? If you did, you are too kind. And you did. Thank you so much, Amy. So that means you get to pick a Super Chat reward as well. So go ahead and pick one, one through 14, and it is yours, my friend. Um, who's the voices of the new Super Chat? That was entirely voiced by my son, Joshua. You did a great job with it. Um, does Mary Sue catfight duel the fates? Yes. <laughs> this is why it's so hard for us to keep up with the chat. So many flying by super hats may, uh, make it easier uh, to see. Just saying. That's true. But, you know, and one thing I've said, though, is that I will always do my very best to respond to as many non-super chats as I can. Because even if, as the channel grows, I don't want people to think that I'm just only responding to money. Because... I get it. I know why large, large channels have to, but I hope that that doesn't take over here. And number 13, Trump roll. Hmm. <laughs> 
So yes, a little blast from the past. For those of you that don't know, that Trump roll video I posted on one of my old channels uh, back in 2015, and it got 2.8 million views just as a standalone video, that 19-second video. Um, uh, Waspinator says, best female characters stay quiet and stick to their... I assume you mean quiet and stick to their knitting. They know what's good for them. That's not true at all, Waspinator. You know that. Um, Hugo says, thank you for both Uber Chats uh, plays. Time I fly. Next part for the Banjo-Kazoo walkthrough. It's been walk wait, watching. It's waiting for me. Good night, all. Hugo, have a wonderful night, and thank you so much for your generosity. I truly do appreciate it. Um... At least it isn't just Ricky rolling. Well, yeah, you see. Um, Rainbow says, why isn't Trump in the original? What do you mean? Uh, he isn't in the original what? Um, oh, in the original music video? Well, probably because he wouldn't be. I don't know. Wow, I had to check this nice amount of peeps tonight or morning or whatever the case may be. Yeah, it, we were, we're really busy tonight. I don't know what's going on, but all of you that are not normal viewers, welcome. Uh, and so it's great to have you. And I apologize if I missed your comment or anything, but thank you. Thank you so much for joining. A volcano erupted in Indonesia where they had a major earthquake and tsunami. Holy crap. That's like, that sucks. So definitely thoughts and prayers out to the good folks of Indonesia. I hope that uh, the loss of life is minimal or non-existent, depending on where it is, obviously. Um, Waspinator says, I just spent the whole weekend watching all 10 Star Wars films in chronological order. I dare anyone to watch them all like that. I, uh, it will later your perception. I'm sure you mean like something like change your perception or something like that. I, I don't know that it would change my perception. Um, I do like watching them, though. I think the best order to watch the Star Wars films is episode one, episode two, then episode four uh, and five, episode three, and then episode six, and then skip the rest. Uh, do your commie voice sounds your your commie voice sounds very close to Doctor Strange's voice? Do you really think so, comrade? I don't know about that. Uh, can you create some Sith Lord figures for us to buy from your website without getting sued by Lucasfilm and Disney? Yes and no. I could create characters. I just couldn't create ex like I couldn't do Darth Vader. That would get me in trouble. Trekyard says, it's all because of Trekyards. Of course it is. Thank you, Captain Foley. I truly, you know, and, and honestly, Captain, uh, I don't know why you came over here and started hanging out with us, but thank you because uh, while, yes, you get us a little bit of extra attention, which is always nice, but you also seem like a cool guy, and I'm glad that we, uh, you're much cooler here than you are on your channel, though, I gotta say. What's the deal with that? Um, Ray, I need someone to show me my place. Russian bot audience. Go into the kitchen. Grab some green milk. Yes. <laughs> Watch Luke milk like a good lady. Um, the death count for Indonesia was at least 1,000. Oh, that sucks. I, yeah. Man. Uh, Mr. Miles says, I'm missing South Park for you. Should you give me a wrench for my troubles? No. Sorry. Watch it tomorrow. It's 12.20 a.m. It's 11.20 for me, my friend. So you are obviously on the East Coast. Um, let's see. Rainbow, you're in UTC plus 10 as well. Oh, man, don't talk to me with time zones like that. That hurts my head. Wait, never mind. It's Tuesday. Yeah, it is. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, because I watched South Park when it first came out last week, and I wasn't doing a live stream. So, yeah, I think you're just stupid. But then again, you are Mr. Miles. Um... And uh, first of all, Iron Wolf, I disagree with you about so the quality of South Park. I think it's gotten better over the years. Uh, I know some people hate it now, but I think it's because they're, I don't know, whatever. Uh, I like it now. Um, I love you guys in this channel. It's like hanging out with friends, but it's just weird, Foley, because why you're so, and, and granted, I get part of it, at least from what we've talked about on Facebook, but you're so dry on your channel. And here you just kind of cut loose, and it's just kind of funny. The correct order is episode 7, then 3, 2, 6, 6 twice? 
And then Rogue One, then one, four, five, eight. Yeah, I, I don't think so. That would just hurt my brain to try and watch it in that order. I seriously dare anyone to see Solo after watching all three prequels and then say it sucked. It sucked. Um, comrades, and, and actually I'll say this. I, I don't think Solo was a horrible movie, but it was bland and generic and was not Han Solo. Jaeger, I'm always polite. Also, come uh, come with a plan in case... Also, come with a plan in case things go south. <laughs> 1,000 is better than the 2004 tsunami. That's true. That's true. That was 250,000. That's that's very, very true. Thank you, Amy, for putting that in perspective. Uh, do I have an Instagram? Not at this point. That might be something to come later. Um, but right now, I can barely keep up with what little social media I do. Uh, tell me, would episode one be better if they took the political crap and Jar Jar? The political crap didn't bother me as much, except that they could have toned it down a little bit and just made it, a, you know, quick in the pace. Uh, Jar Jar, definitely. Uh, if you haven't seen it, and by the way, first of all, I do not believe in breaking the law. Repeat, do not break the law, which means that I do not believe you should download any specialized cut of Star Wars unless you own a legitimate copy. I absolutely believe that. Now, that being said, if you own a legitimate copy of Episode 1, then absolutely find the D... Uh, what's it called? The anti-cheese edit of Episode 1. It is phenomenal. They cut out all the crap, and it is so good. I highly recommend it. The anti-cheese edit. I've watched it it is phenomenally well done. Whoever edited that deserves an Academy Award because they fixed that movie. Shannon throws four ninety nine into the chat. Says, "I thought of a name for your live streams: Russian Roundtable." Yes. <laughs> well, that would make sense. My old channel was called Rational Roundtable, so that makes perfect sense. Uh, Uber chat number five, please. So. Uh... Does anybody really know why we're fighting anyway? Well, um, I think... Hey, didn't he vote for Trump? Hmm? He did it! Get him! Get him! Get him! So remember, if anyone has an opinion, they're probably wrong. Now, now we, we know. know! And knowing is half the battle. Oh, man. Kronos... Uh, you and Michael Dunn are onto something. They're talking about Bullwinkle and the, the stupid Russian, what's his name, uh, and doing a super chat with that. Like, I could just see, like, Bullwinkle is Ryan Johnson. It's like, hey, let me pull a movie out of my ass. You know, <laughs> just be, oh, man, I could definitely see something with that. Uh, what is so fishy just got here? Uh, well, Darth Vader at the very beginning of the live stream said something was fishy, so I, that's why I... I Name the live stream. Um, new idea. Chelsea versus Chelsea, Dawn of Social Justice. Chelsea Clinton versus Chelsea Manning and Julian. I. That's an interesting idea. Um, Track Yards or Captain Foley says, I can cut loose here because I'm faceless. I can be truly evil here. Yeah, but you can be truly evil on your channel. You know what? You already got 40 plus thousand subscribers. I'll bet if you started cutting loose on Track Yards, you would, you would probably hit 100,000. Um, reality says the anti trucker is building culture, not audience. That's true, but I'd like to build both. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the honest truth. Um, and quantum says I'm 4.1 hours from your mailbox in Murfreesboro. Well, come on by sometime quantum. It, no, in all seriousness, if you are ever in Murfreesboro and I, and I've said this before, if you're ever in Murfreesboro, just like reality strikes, um, uh, a few days ago, by all means, let me know on Discord that you're going to be in town, and if I can arrange it, we'll meet up somewhere and hang out, Just uh, and it'll be cool. So absolutely, any and that, that's a standing invitation for anybody out there. If you're going to be in town, let me know, and if I can arrange it, we'll hang out for at least an hour or two. Uh, and me and Reality have actually met up twice. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um. So remember, normal is a fallacy. What is normal for the spider is chaos to the fly. Well, unless the fly is a masochist, in which case he's cool with it. Quantum Leaper says, what I was saying earlier is that I need to go be going to bed. <laughs> All right, Quantum. 
thank you for joining us. I truly appreciate it. And you probably already left because I'm so far behind. Um, I did. I wasn't all upset. LOL. I had no idea. Uh, oh, Thomas is saying he sounded. Yeah, some people said you sounded upset when we were trolling you. But I figured you took it well because. But I know you, you just seem so serious on track yards. Uh, shouldn't the anti-trekker be here today since it's Tuesday? Anti-trekker, shouldn't the anti-printer be here today since it's Tuesday? Well, yes, but I couldn't make that happen. Hello, anti-trekker. How are you tonight? Tonight or uh, this morning is Wednesday, October 3rd. No, it's Tuesday, October 2nd. Guess what? I just got an NES Mini. It's great. Well, very cool. I don't have... Uh, I've never had a Nintendo. It's funny. It's like I've, I've had Sony, I've had Microsoft, I've never had uh, Nintendo. Uh, Darth Vader says, Andy Trekker, is that okay if you have a legitimate copy of something, an illegal download or something is not front? It's actually not an illegal download if you own it. Because if you own it and you download a copy of it, that is simply, you can refer to that as a backup copy. And that is completely and utterly legal because you paid for the rights to own that copyrighted work. Uh, it is illegal to download something you do not own a legitimate copy of. Um, which prequel's the worst? I say episode two because it's boring and we can't buy the romance in it. I, you know, I agree. I think episode two, episode one has Jar Jar in spades, which is its biggest weakness, but it also has the best lightsaber duel in all of Star Wars. Uh, the, uh, Episode, as far as just choreography, I think the most emotional lightsaber duel was Return of the Jedi. The um, so I would say I think I would agree with you. I think Episode Two is the worst. I do cut loose on my single no topic uh, live streams. Lol, you aren't paying attention. Well, I probably yeah I haven't seen those. I'll be honest with you, Foley, I have not. Um, but that's mainly because I never have any freaking spare time. Um, but what I, I, you know, like, I know that, you know, t tomorrow's show, because, uh, by the way, guys, now you guys know all of you that have been regulars of my show for any length of time. know I'm a cheap bastard, right? And I'm greedy as all hell. Uh, in fact, you can ask Waspinator. He came up with the, the, you know, I just realized I didn't put the stupid screen back up, but that I, that, you know, I, I'm a living embodiment of a tip jar. So given that. Um, I actually put in a $10 super chat to Trek Yards the other day because they put out that the, uh, that the first $10 super chat was going to pick the series and the second one was going to pick the episode and they were going to review it on Wednesday and somebody picked Voyager. So I immediately threw 10 bucks in so I could make them do threshold. I cannot wait. Although the scary thing is Foley says he likes threshold. So that's kind of weird. Um, can you tell if I have a West Coast accent with my cons voice recording? <coughs> I'm not going to come. You're not going to get me out of there. I'm not going to talk about it. Ha, ha, ha. Iron Wolf says, I'm about seven hours from Murfreesboro. Well, you see, if you're ever in town, I'm not saying you should drive to Murfreesboro just to hang out with me for an hour. But if you ever happen to be driving through Murfreesboro or through Middle Tennessee and we can make it work, let me know. Why does patron take uh, money out Tuesday instead of the first? They start processing on the first. Uh, and so, but then it was Tuesday that I could, it just depends on how long it takes them to process. It was basically um, at the, uh, the, this morning that I was able to, what, that the processing finished. And so it just varies from month to month. Sometimes the processing is done in a few hours. Sometimes it takes a couple of days. Um, uh, let's see if Trek Yards cut, uh, cut loose more on this channel. He's scare blocking cockings. Oh, I don't know about scare him, but it might make him uncomfortable. <laughs> episode three had the best moment, the rise of the empire. I think episode three had some strong moments to it. I, th I do think episode three was not as bad as some people make it out to be. Um, and Chronos says anti trigger and a jerk. I'm not sure what that's to, but yes, thank you. I I don't know. Ten dollars for anti trigger for the win. Yes, yes. You get ten anti dollars. That is a major accomplishment. That is this. I will tell you, and this is absolutely true, uh, uh, Captain. That is the largest super chat I've ever done. <laughs> and so, and I did it just to get you to 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 do threshold. So. <laughs> 
Uh, have you played Star Trek Timelines? I have not. Um, I, honestly, I've the I remember the 25th anniversary game uh, was somewhat fun just for some of the nostalgia stuff. But really, none of the Star Trek games have really grabbed me. I mean, like, I played, I can't remember the name of it, but the first-person shooter that was based on Voyager. Uh, I played Armada and Armada 2. I played Star Trek Online. But none of the Star Trek games have really grabbed me, and, and I don't know why. Um, I know you played Timelines. Um, how much you get paid for tip... Let's see. How much did you get paid for tip... Jar Binks being in episode one. Um, Tip Jar Binks was not in episode one. About a month ago, we found a rooster outside our house, and we kept him and fed him ever since we call him Mr. McNuggets. That is a great name for a, a rooster. I remember watching Threshold when it first aired. I was ranting to my brother on how stupid it was, and now, and how it didn't make any sense. Lol, I was fourteen. Yeah. And so, and so, do you, uh, Trekkers, do you like Move Along Home? And Trekkers says, hell no. Which actually, but you, you probably like the first half of it, right, Captain? Mm hmm. Uh, Elite Force, yes, thank you. That was the game. Uh, yeah, Elite Force. Um, but yeah, it just, it didn't work. I, I don't know. I, it, it seems like you should be able to make a first person shooter in the Trek world, but they just didn't make it work. Um, it was not a bad game, but it didn't feel like Trek. Armada 2 and the mod Armada 3 are my favorites. I haven't played the mod Armada 3. I know that's like a mod for Sins of a Solar Empire, if I'm correct, right? And if so, I might like it, because I do like Sins of a Solar Empire. Uh, ever notice the reflection of the boom mic operator in TNG uniform? Uh, you'd have to be more specific than that, but probably not. Uh... Ricky Radio says, Chula, did I win? Hardly. Okay. Uh, LOL, no, I don't like the first half. Yes, you do. That's uh, it's, it's confirmed. Captain Foley likes the first half of Move Along Home. Um, Cat's Paw wasn't threshold bad. No, Cat's Paw, um, while it was a bad... It, well, I wouldn't even say bad. It was actually an interesting concept episode. It's just that the visuals couldn't live up to what they were trying to do. That was the biggest problem with Cat's Paw. Uh, if you redid Cat's Paw, I think it could actually be good. Um, my opinion, as far as really bad episodes of the original series and the children shall lead, is horrifically bad. And um, the way to Eden is horrifically bad. Um did you ever play Final Unity? I'm trying to remember that one. Um, I don't remember it. There was an Elite Force 2 on the Enterprise E. I'd never played that one. I didn't know about it. Uh, Chula was the game. The Wadi was the race. I don't know about that one. And you guys are just getting some really obscure stuff. At least obscure for me. I'm an old man. What do I know? Uh, we don't know where Mr. McNuggets came from. We don't know how he got there. But we, um, we, but he should not get comfortable because next week it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> Riker changed out the native clothing fast in Who Watches the Watchers. Yeah, well, Who Watches the Watchers, man? You guys, If you've seen my review of it, you know my opinion on that one. Um, Miri, my wife despises Miri. If you, if she, if I would be willing to bet the next time Mrs. Anti Trekker is on, one of you guys should ask what her least favorite episode of the original Trek is, and she'll probably say Miri. Um, it looks like the closet I've, I've been to Anti Trekker is St. Louis. Looks like the closest I've been to Anti Trekker is St. Louis and Atlanta. Well, that's funny because, see, Amy. Uh, the reason that uh, Reality Strikes visits me every now and then is because he drives from St. Louis to Atlanta. Uh, Final Unity was a TNG game by Spectrum. I, uh, I don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't think I ever played it. Uh, you shouldn't play with strange cocks that wander into your yard. Generally, that's true. But if you name the strange cock Mr. McNuggets, how can you not? I love who watches the watchers back to front. Mercer, you're lucky I'm in a good mood or I would ban you. And I'm only in a good mood thanks to Woodford Reserve. Woodford Reserve 
the the official bourbon of the anti trekker late night live stream um, for tonight at least so yes um, Orville versus Enterprise D in a fight. Enterprise D, come on. The Orville is not even really. It's it's more of um, an ex explore exploration ship. It's not a it's not a battleship like the Enterprise. Uh, well, the Enterprise D is a heavy cruiser, but yeah, it wouldn't have a chance. Uh, reality says if you think about it, the way to Eden wasn't that bad because in the end, hippie ideology was a failure. <laughs> Uh, Treklar, tre tre Treklards, Trekyards likes who watches the watchers. Really? Really, Trekyards? You like that whole condescending speech about religion? Which Mercer Create throws into the chat. So we'll have to do that some justice. Um, millennia ago, they abandoned their belief on the supernatural. Now you're asking me to sabotage that achievement, send them back into the dark ages of superstition and ignorance and fear. No. Yeah, no thank you. Um, <clears throat> let me get on my soapbox and complain about how you ignored me and missed my last comment. Go look at it. Fine, Captain. Jeez. You know better than most. Okay. And Trekker, we need uh, me and you versus Lore and Trek Yards for Star Trek Armada uh, 3 Sins mod. The problem is, is that we will get stomped, Captain George, because you have me on, on the team. Because I will suck. Yeah, it, it's going to be, it would be bad. <laughs> um... Paradise Syndrome, wasn't that the one where uh, Flower Power makes Spock emotional? Uh, yeah, that's the one with the spores. Um, but I didn't think that one was a horrifically bad episode or anything. The Way to Eden had Nurse uh, Charles Napier as a hippie. It's worth something at least. Well, okay. A model of the Orville would be nice. Yeah, Eagle Moss should include the Orville in their Star Trek collection. That would be really awesome. <laughs> Uh, who watches the watchers was certainly entertaining. I I actually didn't find it that that entertaining. Hey Trekker, they just started filming the John Favreau live action Star Wars TV series. Yay! The first full episode of Star Trek I saw was Times Arrow Part Two. Wow! I am so sorry, Amy. And you're still and you're here now. That's amazing. Uh, if you believe I'm all powerful, then you cannot hurt me. If, however, I'm telling the truth and I am mortal, you will kill me. But if the only proof you believe in my death, then shoot. Yes, that is um, from there. Each time I see the Orville ship, it makes me think of a high heel shoe. <laughs> it kind of does. That's a good one, Luke. Just an FYI, sip the Wolf Woodford with some ice. It's a sipping bourbon. I tell you, not to me. <laughs> uh, it's that's a good drinking bourbon. Um, because it doesn't burn too bad. That's, I, I like that. That's, it's very smooth. Um, let's see. That was a fun episode, which, uh, if you're talking, this side of paradise, Spock spores. Yes. You know what? I'm going to watch who watches the watchers after this stream. You go right ahead, Mr. Miles. And since you're a jerk, you'll like it. Or, well, Captain Foley's. Well, he does. Captain Foley has sent me multiple death threats through Facebook, so I guess I kind of have to say he's kind of a jerk. Um, this side of this side of paradise. This is D. Newton says spores, spore drive, coincidence. Wow, <laughs> I never put that together, but maybe you're right. Those could be the spores that power the spore drive. Who watches the Watchers? I thought was very entertaining and fun. A very fun episode brought up some very interesting and intriguing questions. I, you know what, it, overall, it, it it has some interesting ideas, but the thing is, is that in my opinion, the way that they go about doing it is, I, I don't know, it's a little too on the nose, very preachy, and Picard's speech, I honestly think, is unworthy of his character. My god, man, drilling holes in his head is not the answer. The artery must be repaired. Now put away your butcher's knives and let me save this patient. 
I do love me some Dr. McCoy. First Star Trek episode I remember watching was when Spock's brain was taken. Brain and brain. What is brain? Andy Trekker, what's your least favorite episode on TOS? Uh, it would probably be And the Children Shall Lead. I really despise that episode. Um, I it, That's like one of the few episodes of the original series where if I'm like have nothing to do and I turn on the TV and that's on, I will find something else to do. I saw parts of Unification before the, uh, before that while searching for a VHS tape of Red Dwarf episodes we recorded overnight. Well, Unification wasn't half bad. Uh, it wasn't great, but it wasn't it, it wasn't up to what it should have been. But it was it was it was enjoyable. And Trekker, have you seen the TOS episode "The Way to Eden"? Uh, well, yes. I've seen every t I, TOS episode. It's an interesting episode, but they never explain why the food on the planet was poisonous. Well, they just say that it's full of acid. And so that everything on the planet is highly acidic. That's that that was the only explanation. The entire biosphere was just extremely acidic. Um, Captain George says, Who watches the watchers is an amazing episode. Yeah, F you. Worst Enterprise episode? Probably a night in sick bay. King Waspinner says, favorite TOS uh, Operation Annihilate, favorite TNG measure of a man, favorite DS9 Pale Moonlight. Um, a lot of people say that for, for DS9 is Pale Moonlight because it's so dark. Um, that's about as dark as Trek got was in Pale Moonlight. Um, but I don't think that was necessarily DS9's crowning achievement was being dark. Um, you know, I would have to say Sacrifice of Angels is probably my favorite DS9 episode. Uh, TNG would probably have to be the Inner Light and TOS would be a toss-up between the Doomsday Machine and Balance of Terror, depending on my mood. Um, so, uh, Voyager, Timeless for me, obviously Voyager, Scorpion, uh, Enterprise, the Catwalk, uh, Enterprise for me, In a Mirror, Darkly, uh, is clearly, the, in my opinion, uh, my favorite. Um, I love Intermittent Mirror Darkly. That's the only revisitation to the Mirror Universe that I actually enjoyed. Um, is that one of the adults get attacked with the disease and the kids bonk? That? No, that's Miri. Uh, and the Children Shall Lead is this horrific episode where they find these kids that survived where all the adults died and the kids have magic powers thanks to Melvin Belli playing the friendly angel. Um... Uh, I wish I was making that up. Uh, do you... Uh, you just don't like uh, Who Watches the Watches because you're religious, but uh, they weren't Christian Vulcans, so they were worshipping false idols. You should agree with Picard. No, it's... I, first of all, I think the Picard speech was condescending and uh, preachy, yes, but it has nothing to do with Christianity because obviously they weren't Christians. Uh, I also have a problem with the fact that the episode is racist, um, and so, and and it's racist in a very subtle way. And people tried to deny that it's racist, but they're trying to say that these people are better than everybody else because of their similarities with Vulcans. Screw that. You know, so they are inherently, and by the way, yes, that is racist, not species, because Vulcans can crossbreed with humans, which means we are the same species. So it is racist. Um, but the, but the, yeah, the episode is predicated in racism or race realism, actually. And the, um, and Picard's speech is condescending and quite frankly offensive. And so, no, I don't like that episode. Um, Trekyards love the Enterprise incident. I actually like the Enterprise incident quite a bit. That's a good episode. Carbon Creek. I don't even remember. What's that one? You'd have to... I, I don't remember that one by name. Um, which one was Similitude? I'm weakest on Enterprise episode. I, yeah, I don't know that one either. Pale Moonlight is not just that it's dark. Cisco sacrifices every principle to protect the principles of the Federation. Yeah, but you see, I... I, I don't think that that makes it great. I just think that... I, I mean, it's not a bad episode, don't get me wrong. But I don't think it's a... I don't, I, I don't think that it's a particularly great episode either. DS9 has not only the darkest episodes for Trek, but also funniest. Look at 
uh, Parmok and all the wrong places. I'll tell you, one of my, uh, I, I, one episode of DS9 I really enjoyed that is kind of silly is the Magnificent Ferengi. I love that one. Uh, Code of Honor should be destroyed. Yes, Code of Honor is another very racist moment in Next Generation. Um, I watched some Star Trek Next Gen when I was younger as reruns, and I found it extremely boring, uninteresting. I usually uh, went to sleep when it was on TV. Uh, yeah, I think TNG, honestly, is kind of overrated. Uh, and I know a lot of people hate me for saying that and think that I hate TNG. Same people that think I hate Voyager. I don't hate any of the Trek shows. Even Discovery, I'm... Well, I hate a lot about Discovery. Well, okay, I do hate Discovery. But I don't hate any of the other shows. And... But I think you're right. TNG tends to be very boring. And part of that is... And, and sorry, guys. But tar part of that is the heavy far-left influence on that series. TOS was not heavy far-left. Even though people think it is. It really wasn't. Um, I think Similitude was when they cloned Trip. Okay. Um, I'll repeat my missed comment that Pale Moonlight works because of its contrast, uh, because of its contrast, but it's reliant on, but it is reliant on context. Um, I agree to disagree, Waspinator. I don't think that it's that great an episode. Homo Neanderthals, Homo sapiens, Homo volcanoes, volcanoes. <laughs> yes. Fun fact, in Carbon Creek, T'Pol's grandmother came to my hometown to give the Velcro. Oh, okay. That's good to know. It's not DS9 that has the darkest and the funniest of Trek. It's the uh, most human of Star Trek. Um, I would disagree, but I do think it's the most human of the later era Trek. Uh, I think that TOS is more human than uh, DS9. And in fact, I think TOS has, the, and, and this is part of the reason that I, I frequently said TOS is my favorite. TOS is the best examination of the human psyche, in my opinion, in television history, if you simply examine the characters as Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. That is an absolutely flawless examination of human psyche by combining those three into a single meta character, and, and that's what they are obviously meant to be. And it's, it's brilliant if you look at it that way. Operation Annihilate is my favorite TOS episode, in part because the only episode with an exclamation point in the title. <laughs> That's funny, that is true. Uh, but uh, that, it's not a bad episode. Um, and it has some interesting high-concept ideas in it, too. Um, wasn't Carbon Creek the episode that Paul tells a story about when the Vulcan crashes in uh, Earth in the 1950s? Well, since the other person mentioned the Velker, I'm going to say yes to that, but uh, I don't remember it by title. Garrick was one of my favorites on DS9. Garrick was a fun character. There were a lot of good... DS9, the one thing that DS9 did so much better than TNG is they had good characters. TNG, that was the worst thing about TNG, is the characters were all the same character, it's just they looked different. Andy Trekker, you might want to switch out the hate for dislike, as I think that that's why you might be uh, getting addicted to outrage. Uh, getting, I think that's why someone might be getting addicted to outrage at you. Well, the like I said, the only episode that I flat out said I've hated is um, is Discovery. And I would stand by that. Now, Discovery still has potential. It could get good. I could get good. Could get better. I will hope that it does. But um, if, if people want to say, because when I say, oh, I don't like this episode, or oh, this is stupid, or whatever, uh, when I make fun of certain some of the tropes, like obviously you guys have heard me, I make fun of the techno babble on Voyager. Uh, all the shows have their flaws, every one of them. With the original series, it's the it's the pure cheese of the original series, right? With Next Generation, it's the preachiness and boring uh, stuff. With uh, with DS9, it does get too dark for my taste at times. With Voyager, the techno babble is laughable, and with Enterprise, they have very little regard for canon. And you know, they all have their things you can make fun of. However, I love all of them. Those shows combined are Star Trek, and I love Star Trek. So don't give me some, and I know none of you guys are here, but don't give me some BS trying to say that I hate whatever Star Trek because it's not my favorite. Screw you. If you really want to be that black and white, screw you. Um, so, sorry. 
Uh, thanks, Dave Trigger. Thank God I'm not the only one who thinks this. TNG is so boring. Yeah, it, TNG had a real, especially the first two seasons. Oh, man. The first two seasons were bad. Is your wife still working on the review of Hellraiser? She is, Kronos. In fact, she's uh, she's been writing a report, uh, basically a book report on the uh, Hellraiser book. And so then after she's done with that, because I told her not until she's done, after she's done with that, then she and I are going to sit down and actually watch, rewatch the movie. And then she's going to do a report on the movie and a comparison of the two. So I'm hoping, I don't know for sure, but I'm hoping we'll have it done by Halloween because I think that would be a great thing to put out on Halloween. Uh, which three parts of the human condition did Kirk, Spock, and McCoy, um, uh, was Spock cold logic side? If you look at Kirk, Spock, and McCoy, you have, um, Spock is obviously our intellect, right? Spock is our ability to rationalize, to reason. McCoy is our emotion. Uh, McCoy is our feeling, our passion. And Kirk is the id. Kirk is... Um, you know, he, and, and, and if you look at the three of them together, Kirk is always seeking out McCoy and Spock and hearing what they both have to say, but, and then blending the two together for a solution. And, and that's, it's beautiful the way they did it. And I've never seen an, another show do it as well as they did it on the original series. And that is still why I think that the original series stands above every other Trek. And in fact, why the original series is still my favorite television series of all time, even though there have been better produced series, there has never been a better portrayal of the human identity than Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. Never. And so, I'm sorry. There have been some really good shows, uh, and some shows that I absolutely love. Like, I would say The Expanse is a truly great show. BSG 2004 is a truly great show. There is... Um, um, Firefly is a truly great show. There have been great shows, but nothing to that level. Um, what do you think is similar to the one where they clone Commander Tucker? I uh, haven't seen it in so long that I couldn't give an honest appraisal of it. I'd have to rewatch it, Captain. Uh, honestly, you know, and, and, I, and I know it's horrible, but yeah, there's a lot that, you know, a lot of episodes that I haven't watched in years and years and years and years, and I'm old now. So... Uh, Kirk is the fulcrum between thought, thought and feeling. Very, yes, Wassmanager. And Kirk, well, Kirk is the id. He is, he has to bring it together. And your id, you know, the idea is that you have your rational, you have your emotional, and then, you know, your id brings that together and bam, you have whatever you do. The holoducks in the first season of TNG were just, what the what? Yeah. The holoducks are very inconsistent throughout TNG. They tried to do the trifecta with TNG with Pulaski and Data and Picard, but it didn't work. She just came off as a bitch. Pulaski was, yeah, Pulaski I did not like as a character at all. Um, and, uh, yeah. Um, uh, Josh says, Ant Trekker, when the Hellraiser review is done, will we finally get to see Mrs. Anti Trekker's face, or will she have Josh make her, uh, uh, make her icon for the review? I'm sure Josh will do an icon for the review. Uh, but no, she, uh, and here's the thing. It's not like she, I know I joke about it. She's not camera shy or anything, but honestly, she just chose that. You know what? No, because you, you know, a lot of, it's funny because here's the thing. And this is absolutely true. The fantasy is always better than reality, right? So you guys have your own image of what you think Mrs. Anti Trekker looks like. And now I will tell you straight up, she's absolutely gorgeous. And if any of you actually get a chance to meet us, you'll get to see her. But She's not going to show up on camera because she likes the idea of she has that air of mystery that she's this disembodied voice. And I'm cool with that. So she will probably never show up on camera unless somebody wants to throw a million dollar bribe in there or something. Um, so Mr. Miles says Pam Poon Lai was a great episode because it dealt with true moral dilemma. I think Star Trek does best. Well, Star Trek's done that in a lot of episodes. And the outcast says, do, 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 do. Okay. Like I said, another forgettable trip episode. All his episodes were lame. I don't know. The trip was not as bad a character as some people make him out to be, but he wasn't a great character either. And Trigger, looking at Star Trek Beyond, uh, Balazar's in the struggle made, uh, made humanity, wait, 
Bal is a Bal ah, Balazar's take that struggle made humanity strong is the correct assessment. That's true. And uh, Star Trek Beyond is a steaming pile of my avatar on the Star Trek franchise. It is the worst of the Star Trek films, period. And yes, I include Star Trek Nemesis, Star Trek Insurrection, Star Trek V, Star Trek The Motion Picture. It is worse than any of those because it craps on Star Trek on purpose. And so, yeah. Pulaski was a robophobe. Yeah, maybe she's just a closet robosexual. That's all it was. Uh, what do you think of DS9 Homefront Paradise Lost? Pretty interesting how correct they got 911 paranoia. Uh, you're right, but yes. Um, I, DS9, I, I'll tell you, I'm not, you're not going to get many complaints about me on DS9. As far as the later era treks, I think it's by far and away the best. Is Mrs. Anti Trekker like Alexia? No, <laughs> no, she's much better than Alexia. Um, and Trigger, I maintain that Dr. Polanski was a superior doctor character that, when compared to Crusher. I'll say this about Polanski. I didn't like her as a character, but she came across as a genuine doctor. Crusher comes across as too stupid to be a doctor. I'm sorry. I know that sounds sexist or whatever. Polanski came across as she was smart, but she was a bitch, right? And I didn't like her. Uh, however, Crusher just came across as she was caring, but she was stupid. And I didn't believe for a minute that this is a PhD. Um, so Kronos, they were trying to, uh, recreate the relation between McCoy and Spock, but when Spock would snark back, Data just took it on the chin and Polanski looked like a bully. Uh, yeah, Polanski was, she was bad. She was that's the thing. She was so unlikable. If they made Polanski a likable character, then that could have been good. Trip wasn't bad. Just the way they killed him off. Oh, don't even get me started on the way they killed him. That was just bad. One major nitpick I have with Beyond is that it seems anti-military. Seems anti-military? Sorry, Jaegerbaum. That movie is freaking through the roof with anti-military, and that's one thing I hate about it. That's the whole point of the plot. Scott said Starfleet isn't one and the military characters get screwed. Yes. I I cannot stand that movie. I'm sorry. Star Trek 2009 success. Star Trek Into Darkness. Weird spot. Star Trek Beyond Failure. JJ's reboots don't... Uh, look. Well, that's the funny thing, though, is that notice... And, and Luke, I, since you mentioned this, this is something I've been thinking about doing a video about. This is the, the, the two greatest science fiction franchises of all time are Star Trek and Star Wars. And guess what happened? Hey, Mecha Random's in the house. Good to see you, Mecha. Oh, I'm sorry. Mecha Random is in the house. Good to see you, comrade. Um, so, guess what? The the, you know, the the funny thing about Star Trek and Star Wars, right? We've always had this argument about who's better and all that. But we can now honestly say that both franchises were revitalized by J.J. Abrams. And as soon as J.J. Abrams stopped making it, they fell the frick apart. Uh, and, and it's hilarious because J.J. Abrams made Star Trek and Star Trek Beyond. He walked away and we got, or I mean, Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness. He walked away and we got Star Trek Beyond, which was an absolute insult to Trek. Now, on the flip side, he made The Force Awakens and he walked away and we got The Last Jedi. An absolute insult to Star Wars. What the heck happened? Why is it that when J.J. touches a project, he can make something halfway decent, but the second he stops, the next person has to take a dump on it? What happened? Sorry. Um, no, uh, that's it for my rant. I, I apologize. I, I'm trying to do more ranty videos because... Um, Honestly, I have so little time in my day, and I, yeah, time for a technical difficulty. It really is. Um, but yes, so uh, it, it's, 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 I don't understand that. I really don't. Um, I, I, and I'm, I would love to have an explanation to what it is about J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams is a very talented filmmaker. And while he lacks the ability to complete a story, he is very good at setting one up. And I liked Star Trek 2009. I'm one of the few people that liked Star Trek Into Darkness. I liked 
Notice I said like, not loved. The Force Awakens. Uh, and in fact, uh, I think that you know, Force Awakens, up until the point when they get on the Millennium Falcon, I actually really liked. Once they get on the Millennium Falcon and, and Rey starts magically getting abilities to do things like fix the Falcon, uh, that's when it kind of pisses me off. And Thomas throws a buck ninety nine into the chat and says, number one for Mecha Random. Mecha Random, this is dedicated to you because you're a woman. I'm a better female character than you. You would be if you didn't spend all your time with that temper tantrum meme guy. At least I'm not the one on a show with a questionable acronym. Take it back. No, 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 Yes, 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 yes. Oops. Sorry to bother you. <laughs> there it is. Ah, uh, yes. Um. No, he looks like a cowboy. I'm not sure what you mean there. You better watch Star Wars The Clone Wars before you even consider re-watching every other Star Trek series. Uh, whatever, Captain. I'm watching SG-1 right now, okay? So, um, but yes. How about uh, SC te Technical Difficulties? What? Reality, thank you for the two bucks, but I'm a little confused. How about a SC tech difficulties sc i need your help here because sc in caps looks to me like south carolina what are what are you talking about and you said arena and what i super chat for technical difficulties okay and i yeah i, I could do something like that but arena what do you mean by when you say arena are you is that a reference to one of the Super chat. How about a super chat technical difficulties? I got that. Okay, that that, that could be doable. But what do you what arena? I, you lost me on that. Um, same here. SC always used to be South Carolina. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I it's my dyslexia, and I know I joke about it sometimes. But yes, since I am genuinely dyslexic, when you guys and and, and please, I'm not angry. But when you guys throw abbreviations into the chat and stuff, I have a hell of a time with that. So, uh, if you can, I know it's difficult, especially if you're watching on a phone or something like that, but please don't put in like LAMO, uh, however you say it, but the stuff like that, it, it drives me freaking crazy. I have such a tough time with that. Um, uh, Captain Foley is also dyslexic. Well, that, that explains a little bit. Um... King Waspinator thinks he's being funny. Um, and I will tell you, uh, like, here's one of those things, because if you're, if you're dyslexic and you're intelligent, which it's kind of interesting because people who are dyslexic tend to score higher on IQ tests, actually. So I'm, I'm grant, I, I would assume that Captain Foley is fairly intelligent. But the, um, the funny thing is, is that you can fake your way around it, right? You learn how to, how to get around it. And, my my wife sometimes forgets that I actually struggle with stuff like that. And so, like, one time we're driving down the street, and she sees a bumper sticker, and she busts out laughing. And I look at the bumper sticker, and I'm like, it says, Dyslexics of the World Unite. And I'm like, I don't get it. Why is that funny? Why is it funny that it says, Dyslexics of the World Unite? And, I'm, and she's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And it's like, what? Well, it says, Dyslexics of the World Untie. And so... Uh, which episode of SG-1 did you finish watching today? Today we watched the one called 1969, a time travel episode, uh, very much like, um, oh gosh, is it Tomorrow's Yesterday? Or is it, yeah, I think, is it Tomorrow's Yesterday is the one where they accidentally go back in time? It's a lot like that one. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not bad. Uh, but it was kind of a... a meanwhile, in time travel, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a solid episode. Uh, we both enjoyed it. Um, so, let's see. Trek Yards has knife and anti-trekker has wrench and cat. That's why Trek, Trek Yards has knife and anti-trekker has wrench and cat. 
Amy, I have no idea what you're talking about. But Jaeger has decided to throw five more bucks into the chat. Thank you so much, Jaeger. I truly appreciate it. it says, besides the off-comment remark by Scott, how else is beyond anti-military? Pardon my under, uh, understatement. May I see Turd in Two Treks? You absolutely can see Turd in Two Treks, and then we'll talk about it. Because why not? Well, um, all right. Well, let's beam down to the planet. Um, energize, Mr. Scott. Hi, Captain. <laughs> Welcome aboard the USS Discovery. There's got to be some kind of other universe, right? Well, please, send me back. Oh my god, send me back. I beg you, no, send me back. Oh. And what uh, reality is saying, your technical difficulties cut away the red shirt from Marina. Now I get it. I apologize. I, I sound like an idiot, but yes, I know that's from Marina, but I don't know why I lost it there. And let me see. Um, bear with me. Bear with me. And let me see what we got here. We got. Technical difficulties. So we, you, you're talking about this picture. Of course, now it doesn't want to load. There we go. Uh, so. You're talking about... Oh, I loaded it twice. <laughs> I'm an idiot. All right, so we, we're talking about this picture. This is reality's favorite picture in the whole wide world. And... But that's not really complete if we do that. Because what we... You know, and, and reality, I, I know you're, you're excited because you're thinking, oh, man. Oh, man, it's coming. Uh, because what really, what, you know, genuinely makes the technical difficulties work... is, well, this. There you go. <laughs> I did. I, I I do think that works. I do love that. Um, yeah, the music combined with that picture are a perfect blend. Uh, and don't worry that the the red shirt from Arena and that music will be coming back on on the channel. Don't don't you don't you worry. Um, so let's talk about Star Trek Beyond. Star Trek Beyond. Uh, first of all, they they and and this is a, this my my biggest issue with Star Trek Into Darkness was actually the fact that they started this anti-military bent there. Where, um, when they were talking about the long-range torpedoes and how they were going to bomb Kronos, and Scotty was like, what are you talking about, Captain? That's a military mission! We're not the military! <laughs> and I was like, oh, come on, guys. If you're not the military, who the hell is the military if you're not it? Honestly, if if a, a heavy cruiser, starship, armed to the nines with phasers and torpedoes and with hundreds of security personnel with phasers and phaser rifles, if that's not the military, who the hell is the military? So... In Beyond, we find out that the military was pretty much disbanded by the Federation, uh, and that's what happened to Captain Salzar, where uh, he, his basically he was military and he was this great military guy, but then they disbanded the military and he had to be an explorer. And oh, now he can't handle it because he's supposed to be a soldier, but he's not smart enough to be an explorer, and so now he has to go off and be mad. F you. I'm sorry, Simon Pegg, you don't freaking get it, all right? 
And, and, and I hope that, hey, don't get me wrong, I like Simon Pegg as Scotty, but if he gets his chance to write another movie, F him. He can go write Shaun of the Dead. I'm fine with him writing Shaun of the Dead. You know what I don't want? Him writing Star Trek. I don't want Simon Pegg touching another Cy Star Trek script ever again. <sighs> So, I, I'm done with this anti-military BS. And I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't get it. I don't get the hate that comes from people like Simon Pegg. Why do you, why, you know... How any of you, the, 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 and I know you guys, when I say any of you, I know I'm not talking about the crowd here because you guys are pretty reasonable people for the most part. However, the whole thing about this anti-military crap from Star Trek makes no freaking sense. How does it make any sense when the Federation is clearly the only armed service in space for the Federation? There is no reference to a non-Starfleet force. And yet, they're not the military because we all have rainbows and Skittles or whatever. Um, Captain Foley says, so we're discussing the Borg on Thursday then. That, that's what I thought we were doing. If you, if you had another specific topic you want to talk about, Captain, I am open. Um, because I think we'll have fun no matter what we're talking about. But I think it'll be more fun if we disagree on something. And I'll be honest and completely fair and open about this. You guys know more technical crap about the ships. I'm not going to even try to argue with you. If you, Especially, you know, if Commander Cockings says, well, actually, there's 17 phaser banks on a Dreadnought-class starship. Don't you know that? I'll be like, yep, you're right. Okay, I'm not going to argue with you on that. But we can argue about some concepts and stuff, and I'll have a lot of fun with you guys. So, but whatever you guys want to, if, if there's something that's irking you that you want to talk about, lay it on me, man, because I want to have fun with you. I, I want to get to know Cockings a little bit, and I, I'm really looking forward to meeting up with you guys on uh, Thursday. I truly am. Uh, so, sorry, Kronos, if I'm getting too heavy for you. Um, Peg is a double dumbass. He absolutely is, Thomas. Thomas, you... Got the comment of the day. That was awesome. Um, so, and by the way, uh, uh, Captain Foley, because one thing I thought about when I watched your last live stream uh, when I threw that super chat at you is that I believe one of, I can't remember who said what, but one of you said that TOS, or TNG was the best Star Trek and the other said that DS9 was, was the best Star Trek. And I will be glad to come onto your show and school you both about how TOS is the best Star Trek. So that's something we could talk about too. Uh, and I, and, and you know, we could have some fun with that. Um, and, and, and like I said, we, I got to get to know Cockings a little bit first because I don't want to, you know, piss them off or anything, but, uh, absolutely. I think we can have fun. Suggestion, do a video on the anti-military BS in Star Trek. Um, think you'd have enough to work with. I don't know because Here's the thing. TNG is, is and, and this is the stupid thing about Trek. TOS was clearly, we're the military. Right? There was no question about it. TNG was like, oh, no, we're not the military because we're evolved beyond that kind of thing. <laughs> and then DS9 was like, yeah, screw it. We're the military. Um, and then Voyager was like, wow, we're scientists and explorers. And then Enterprise was like, yeah, we're explorers. Enterprise was the only one I bought where the Enterprise was not a military vessel. Honestly. Um, ain't bothering me, boss. All right, good. When are you going to finish the Borg review? I'm going to be getting to Scorpion Part 2 uh, later this week. I, uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, you guys, uh, just so you know. I know that this particular week I haven't had a Borg review out, which is unusual for me. However, a big part of that is because I'm trying to get the anti-layer prepared for the anti-printer. Uh, that's, that's an absolute fact. You can see behind me that big 
bubbly looking thing. That's actually, I had to move that. I've been moving shelves around. That's why the, uh, the, uh, the printer that, that, uh, I have right now that I've been working with is right here as opposed to where it was before, because where it was before is where the anti-printer is going to go. I, I, and so I, a lot of physical work and being, and, and I know this sounds stupid and I'm not trying to whine and bitch, but having the back that I do, having the arthritis that I do, doing this, uh, this type of work around here is extremely difficult for me because I do an hour's worth of work, which 10 years ago would have been so easy now causes me excruciating pain where I have to sit down for a couple hours and, and hope that my back will get to a point where I can stand up and and deal with the day so it's been very difficult but and and i appreciate you guys patience with me i will get back to the borg reviews as soon as possible but i got to get the anti-layer ready because the anti-printer should be here day after tomorrow and i want to make sure that i have everything set up for that because right here on this table what i'm planning on doing and you guys tell me if you want me to do this because if you don't i won't and so right now, the 56 of you that are here right now are going to get to decide the future of the anti-printer on Thursday. Because Thursday is going to be a special day. I'm going to be doing a rant Thursday for my video on Thursday. My Thursday morning video is going to be a complete and utter rant about CBS. Because it will be the one year anniversary of CBS blocking worldwide my first video that I put on this channel. However... What I'm planning on doing Thursday night, if you guys want, and again, I want to know what your opinion is on this. If you want me to on Thursday night, this table right here is going to have the box unopened with the anti-printer in it, and I will talk to you guys while I'm putting it together. Now, the only problem is I won't be able to necessarily keep up on the chat, so uh, I may try to get Mrs. Antitrekker to help me keep up on the chat while I'm putting the printer together. However, uh, that's what I'm thinking. So you tell me if you, if you want me to do that. So here's what I want. Throw a number one in the chat if you want me to do the unboxing and assembly of the anti-printer live on Thursday night. Put a two in the chat if you don't want me to and put a three in the chat if you don't give a crap so so one means you want to do it wasp mayor doesn't care i figure that and so looks like the consensus is that you guys want me to do it so i will talk to mrs anti-trekker i can't promise you but i'll try to talk to mrs anti-trekker about um trying to uh do the uh uh, help me with the chat because one for another Mrs. Antitrucker stream, if only for chat. <laughs> oh, you guys, and I know you guys love Mrs. Antitrucker, and she does not get it, she does not understand why you guys love her, but I, I, I do. <laughs> She's got an awesome voice. If Starfleet isn't the military, then why is Star Trek 2 and Star and 6 uh, debatable the best Star Trek movies? Exactly, and you know what? The funny thing is, is that Gene Roddenberry hates those two films. So, which doctor is the best? Come on. Um, honestly, you know, I know fourth doctor is the obvious choice, but I got to go with third. Uh, I love Putri. 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 How do how you say his name? I'm too tired. Uh, Kronos says, check pal pay. I thought you weren't doing that. But I will check, my friend. And so, I know that Amy threw some in there earlier. And... Let me see. I still see, I see Amy's. I don't see anything from you, but there could be a delay. I'll give you a minute here. Um, five times. Oh, don't, don't give me Thomas. You're going to break my brain. You're going to the sexy, smooth voice of the anti trekker Uh, Chrono says, please check above. Are you talking about the check pal, pal pay? Now I know you've never lied to me before, so I, I'm not going to think you're lying to me now. Um, and so, you, I don't know what you put in there, but I will trust you, Kronos, because PalPay sometimes, as you know, has a little bit of a delay. And so while I can't see... Oh, yes, I do. That's weird. Oh, okay, I get it. That's weird. Okay, so it's because I didn't accept 
Amy's pal pay, so it just kind of weird. Uh, because Amy sent fake uh, Australian money, and so I have to actually accept that I want it converted to American money so that it'll be real. So I didn't, I, I apologize. So Kronos, you, uh, now the, let me go back to the chat because I'm sure you put in 17 things. Uh, so tell me what you want to do and you, w we will do it. Um, Charles says he'll bring some beers. Awesome. Uh, I don't drink beer, but I'm cool with that. Um, let these guys decide what we can talk about on Trek Yards. Well, here's the thing, though. We already know what you're talking about on Trek Yards. You're going to be talking about Threshold. Or is there something like, and let's see. I should send you $10 and then you send it back on one of our lives that I super chatted back. We keep recycling the 10 just because you learned that you're on the cheap. I am cheap. I will admit, admit that. Um, but Trek Yards, honestly, if there's, some, I mean, I know you guys do Starship lore and you're very, very good at it. Uh, you guys are freaking awesome at it. Uh, and as far as getting that technical knowledge, the, um, and Carlos votes above 14 times two. Okay. So real quick, before we, before I go on about how much I love Trek Yards kissing his ass, trying to get more shout outs from him. Uh, what I'd like you to do is you can pick any of the Uber chat. So Uber chat one through five or mega chat one through four, throw your pick in the chat Right now, top two winners get played. So uh, remember, if you don't vote, then I'll make you suffer. And you know I have the ability to make you suffer. Um, no, what we should do, have them decide what we discuss on Thursday. Well, based on, but you see what, uh, and, and honestly, I don't know your schedule that well, Trek Yards, because I use, I think of your channel as more of a resource. Like if I need to look up something on a constitution class, I will go to your channel and look for your videos on constitution. Um, so I need to know. So we got uh, mega one, mega one, Uber two, mega four. Uh, Outcast says five question mark. Uh, mega two, Uber chat and Uber two. Of course, that's Captain George. He's always got a, he's, he's such a narcissist. Uh, so it looks like mega one and Uber two are the winners. So we'll start off by making Mecking? Making everybody suffer. I may have a shit. It's not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean shit. Take the bloody shit. So, uh, Reality throws a couple more bucks into the chat. Thank you, Reality. Uh, my evil 
Lex Luthor friend uh, and wants to treat track yards to some cross dressing lore because he's a freak, I guess. <laughs> Hey, you want to learn about Jesus? There's no such thing as hooker client confidentiality. <laughs> oh man, that one just yeah, that's sick. Um, Sci-Fi Sis says I prefer the Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant uh, era of Doctor Who. Of the later Doctors, I like Tennant. Uh, I really do. I now. I like all of the doctors to, to a certain extent, like Eccleston, Matt Smith, and of course Capaldi. I, I each one of them has their charm, but if I had to pick one, I would go David Tennant. I think he was of the modern Who. He's the consummate Who. Uh, the song is catchy, although I'm dancing right now to it, not looking but listening. <laughs> a lot of people say that. Um, Chrono says, "Did you forget something?" Oh yeah, I forgot. You're right. Uh, so we actually had, besides that, we had Uber number two to play. So let's put that up there. Thank you for holding me accountable, my friend. Hello, everybody. Is your front yard now growing according to your plan? Are you unable to eradicate those pesky rebellious crackers? <laughs> Call us. I am the Lawn Master, and everything will grow according to my design. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> there it is. Oh, man. So, uh, Trek Yards likes Max Smith. I, I, Here's the thing. I like Matt Smith. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't think... Now, I haven't seen What's-Her-Name as the third, 13th Doctor. I've not seen the Christmas special. I don't know anything about her. So, I have no opinion on her whatsoever. I'll make fun of... I do think changing the Doctor to a woman was a mistake, but I don't dislike her character. I haven't gotten to know her. The uh, But... All the the previous, you know, all the modern era doctors, I like all of them. I've seen every episode from every one of them. But I'm just saying, if I had to pick one as a favorite, I think it's clear David Tennant was the best. Uh, see, even Amy thinks I should have a wrench, anti trekker If you don't give me one now, it's sexist. Hold on, hold on, you're right. Let me get you taken care of. I am truly sorry. Here you go. <laughs> Oops, I didn't mean to bring up the tip jar. Sorry about that. All right, so yes, for those of you that don't know, when Mr. Miles asks for a wrench, I give him some crap. Matt Smith is like a creepy professor. Well, Matt Smith is going to be in Star Wars now, so there's that. Um, and let's see. Uh, Mr. Miles is trying to hurt my brain. Thank you, Mr. Miles, for doing that. You're so kind it's like looking into the face of god wow i that's that's weird amy you say miles doesn't need a wrench no he does not he definitely does not um how many times do we need to tell you we don't do sand well but you don't like sand right it's all coarse and gets everywhere uh. um and we only got four days till the new series comes out and we can find out for ourselves. But I think 13 is going to become my least favorite doctor. Here's the thing is that from what little I've heard, and I genuinely don't know, but but from what I've seen and heard of, of this is that everything is going full SJW on Doctor Who, which it's already been leaning that way for a while. And so if that's true, if, if the new doctor is just an excuse for throwing out a bunch of feminist crap, then yeah, it's the show's going to die uh, a horrific death. And then they're going to blame the fans for being a bunch of sexist because they don't like crappy television. Well, screw that. 
Um, C, Josh, Antitricker gets it. Okay. I get something, I guess. Or maybe about sand. Um, you misread what I said. Sorry, Outcast. What I see. I've been waiting about four days till the new series comes out and we can find out for ourselves, but I don't think 13 is going to become. Oh, I don't think 13 is going to become my least favorite doctor. I'm sorry. I am so sorry, Outcast. Uh, but I do think that, that, that the, it's stacked against her because, like I said, they have put out a lot of feelers that this is going to be a very SJW kind of doctor. And if that's the case, I'm not interested. But we'll see. Telling people to go pound sand is fun to do. It certainly can be. Um, so now Trek Yards is throwing a bunch of crap in there that I can't read to respond to Mr. Miles, which I'm sure that's like code for something and screw you both. I remember SG-1 episode 1969. SG-1 goes back in time where they go through the Stargate because of a supernova. That is absolutely correct. That is, in fact, what happened. Uh, and, yes. <laughs> I explained in my reply to your vid this morning why the studios end up blaming the fans. They can't blame themselves because the shareholders and the activists hold them hostage on Twitter. I haven't seen your video yet, Waspinator. Um, so, but uh, I'm sure that's what you said. It's Russian spy codes. Yes. Well, I don't think so, because if it were Russian spy codes, I would understand it. I know that sounded like Russian transitioning to Scottish for some reason. Um, all right, guys. Well, it is midnight 30, and I got to get up in about four and a half hours. So I do need to wind it up here. But I want to say thank you to you guys. Uh, we've had a... Uh, a surprising number of people here. So those of you that are newer to the show, thank you and welcome. And for those of you that have been around for a while, why the hell are you still here? Oh yeah, you're waiting for the after credit show, aren't you? <laughs> It's the Anti-Trekker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. <laughs> so Josh has decided to throw the buck in. By the way, and again, if anybody knows what happened to James, because <laughs> it's not the fact that he's throwing a buck every now and then, I want to know that he's okay, because he disappeared about the time of the hurricanes, and I'm genuinely concerned for him. So if any of you guys hear from him, let me know, because I want to know that he's all right. Uh, in the meantime, Josh... You know the deal. You get to pick a Super Chat reward, so throw it at me, my friend. Um, Shomer's singing at me. Welcome to the hotel, Anti-Tracker. Yes. Um, got a dentist to see in the morning and work. That sucks. Damn, I love that running gag at the end. Yes. <laughs> Uh, did you ever know where James lived? No, I have no idea where James uh, lives. And so I... Uh, you know, I, I genuinely, that's why I'm concerned for him. I, I don't know if he was in the affected area for the hurricane. Uh, I don't know if he just maybe got pissed at me or, and stopped watching. And, and that's the thing. And, and here's the thing, like, uh, there, there have been a few people, some more publicly than others that have gotten pissed at me and left the channel. 
But if, and if you tell me, hey, screw you, I'm not watching you anymore, I'm fine with that. But if you just disappear one day and I didn't know there was a problem, I, I get concerned. And so I, I genuinely hope that James is okay, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. Uh, show a picture of the USS Antrick I posted on Discord. Well, let's see here. Where is it? I'll bring it up for you, my friend. Since you're bribing me to do it. In the meantime, I'm still waiting for Josh to pick his Super Chat reward. Oh, he did. He picked number one. And that's the wrong... There we go. So this is uh, the USS Antitracker at the home of Reality Strikes. So he is the first person to actually have a copy of the, uh, the Antitracker. And he wants to see the Hypno Turd. So we'll put on the Hypno Turd for him. Because he's a jerk. That kind of works with the music, doesn't it? All hail the hypnoter. All hail the hypnoter. You must give to the hypnoter. Now, here's the funny thing. Now, Derek McManus, of course, is saying, screw you, I'm not watching anymore. But Derek McManus, I happen to know, is from Ireland. Why do I know that? Because he sent me stuff from Ireland. Thank you, Derek, by the way. Uh, and as such, you know that Irish people, when they say something, oh, screw you, I'm not watching anymore. And so you sound like you love somebody even when you're saying screw you. So I, I don't believe you. And so, oh, and I forgot, he uh, picked number one, so let me bring that up for um, uh, Josh, and we'll bring that... I'm a better female character than you! You would be if you didn't spend all your time with that temper tantrum meme guy. At least I'm not the one on a show with a questionable acronym. Take it back! No, 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 yes, no, no, Yes, 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 yes! Oops. Sorry to bother you. <laughs> yes. Um, oop, well, did I hit the wrong? Oh, wait. No, that's. Man, I'm just messing everything up here. All right. There we go. Now it's all fixed. All right. And Luke Fovark also throws an evil European dollar in there. Thank you so much, Luke. I truly do appreciate it. And uh, check cards. Are you going to print a USS Foley or what? And where's my damn plaque? Well, I. One thing at a time, first of all, if you want me to actually cr print the USS Foley, you're going to have to send me a 3D model of the USS Foley, all right? I can't do it without the actual model. As for the plaque, by the way, for those, I, you can barely see it here, but yes, the anti tracker plaque is coming along pretty good. And yes, I will uh, make a Foley plaque for you, but you know what? As much as I love you, Captain Foley, you are a, a lower tier priority than my patron supporters. But yes, I am uh, actually going to be working on uh, the Foley plaque in the next couple of days. But if you want me to do the Foley itself, you need to send me the 3D model and I will see what I can do with it. Um, and uh, yeah, and absolutely, I, I, would, I would do that for you if I can. I, I can't promise you that I'll be able to do it, but I will try. Uh, in the meantime, Luke wants to see number 13. So Luke, being my favorite Frenchman, gets what he wants. And yes, Captain Foley, since you are a large YouTube channel, you should, and, and, and I will tell you this, uh, and you can, and, and I'm, you know, I won't be lying because you can verify everything I'm about to say is I am a big believer that YouTubers, content creators like you, like me, like Lore should be supporting multiple other channels, not because we're rich, because I know I'm, I mean, I'm the smallest of the three channels I just named, but I know I'm not, but for a buck a month, we can support a half a dozen channels easily and get those names out there. So, you know, that way, cause I know I have a decent number of patron supporters myself and I want them to see the channels that I support and, uh, to, to encourage people to check them out. 
So I actually do go out of my, and in fact, it's funny because I'm a, I'm a patron supporter of, for example, Doomcock. And I was a patron supporter of Doomcock when he had 3,000 subs, and now he has 10,000. And I was talking him up when he had 3,000 3, subs. So I take partial credit for his phenomenal growth, and I'm so excited that he is growing like gangbusters right now. Anyway, guys, once again, have a wonderful, wonderful whatever it is that you're having. The Anti-Checker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. for a dollar <laughs> oh amy you had to wait till the very end then you and, and it's a fake australian dollar to boot but or however you say it uh i know canadians say a boot <clears throat> but uh so but thank you amy <clears throat> i do appreciate it i truly do yeah. see i i have a tough time saying you're a jerk because your girl at least i assume you are and therefore i can't call you a jerk because i'm chivalrous dang it i hate my patriarchal crap um so uh what's it uh, had to try that once <laughs> that's all right amy i'm glad you did uh well not really but wants number three, it looks like, or is that a face? I mean, is that number three that you want, or do you want another? I want to confirm because you have a colon, then a three, so you could just be doing a face there. So, which super chat reward do you want? Um, reality says wrench. You have a wrench. What are you talking about? Uh, it's become the keep anti trucker awake live stream. Well, but you know, keep Michael's awake, not around. We got to find him. We really got to like, we got, we got to find that man. I, I'm really concerned about James. And like I said, and Amy wants number seven. You got it. And let's get that up there. Borg, Borg, Borg. Do, do, Borg. In chipping, chipping, de Borg. Porgy, come here, Porgy. Chuppy, chuppy, Porgy. And Captain Foley throws two seventy-nine of his fake Canadian dollars in there. And when I just figured you out, you see, you're such a scammer. You're saying, "Oh, we should go back and forth with the ten dollars. That would be fun." Except that since I put ten dollars in in American money, and then you put ten canadian dollars in you're just gonna be making money hand over fist no 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 way man but in the meantime you want broke back youtubers and captain thank you so much for your support and absolutely i now pronounce you man and turd you may now kiss
Joshua, what are you doing? Ah! Nothing, nothing. I'm definitely not making you kiss law. I repeat, I am not making you kiss law. I'm definitely not. <laughs> oh, man, I do love that. Andy Drucker is a toxic white male. No, I'm Russian. Not white. I am Russian. Um... I'd make it the U.S. Uh, yeah, so I assume, I, I don't know how it works in, uh, when you're giving a non-American currency, because, you know, I, I use real money. Um, but uh, what I, you know, and when you, and when you guys support the channel, hey, whatever you guys can spare, I appreciate if, and I joke about it, I give you guys a hard time, but don't ever think that I think, oh, you got to give more. No, I want you to give what you can, if you can. Uh, and if you feel like somebody else is doing a better job than me, then support them instead of me. I absolutely believe in that. Uh, Cronus is making a toast for James. I, as well, I hope that he is okay. And like I said, if any of you guys, and, and I absolutely mean this, if any of you guys here from James, a.k.a. Keep Michael Awake, let him know that we're concerned. And in the meantime, guys, have a wonderful, um, yeah, you know the drill. <laughs>
And, you know, I actually never did look. Uh, does he actually have videos on his channel? Um, let me take a look here. And let me... Yeah, I guess he does have two videos on there. And second one is from three weeks ago, 47 seconds long. And I don't know what he was talking about. This is my first video. I'm James, a.k.a. Keep Michael Awake. Uh, turkey went to bed, so uh, here I am. This is my very first video. I have not a clue what I'm doing. Um, so, All right, so here's what I'd like you to do, guys. And uh, I'm sure you could hear that. I, I wasn't showing the actual video. But uh, go to his channel, and I'll let me copy the link here. This is the link to his video. And I'm absolutely serious about this, because... Uh, it's not about him throwing a buck in and all that. I want to make sure he's all right. So there's the link to uh, Keep Michael's Awake last video, which was three weeks ago. I want you to like the video, number one, and I want you to leave a nice comment just asking, hey, man, we haven't heard from you in a while. Are you okay? And I'm doing that right now, in fact. And so I actually put exactly what I just said. So I, I just um, commented on there. I hope you will do that because I genuinely want to know that that um, that James is okay because uh, he's uh, you know he, he seems like a nice guy. Um, <coughs> Mr. Miles says, "If I vanish, are you going to throw a party or look for me? Um, if you vanish, I will throw a party." Uh, absolutely. So that's that's kind of, but you should know that. I mean, come on, it's you. the anti-tracker we will return to your scheduled programming shortly or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties
Mm-hmm.